please don't go on board expecting to work two days a week because you will be very, very disappointed. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today we're gonna to be talking about how time off is given when you work on a cruise ship. Uh, so if you want some more cruise ship content, please press the subscribe button. But as for now, let's get into the video. So if you are gonna go and work on a cruise ship, then you're probably gonna do it because you want to travel, you want to see a little bit of the world, um, which, you know, great. That's why I initially did it as well. Um, but obviously you need time off to be able to go out and explore the ports and depending on what job you have um depends on whether you get a lot of time off or not much at all um, and also you don't necessarily get like weekends off or a whole day off so um as i said today i'm gonna break it down we're gonna go through how time off is given and also what jobs on board give you the most amount of time off so you know if you are just hoping to work on a cruise ship because you want to see a bit of the world um we're gonna go through what jobs you should consider time off on a ship is not like time off at home so maybe when you work at home you would work like monday to friday and then have the weekend off yeah that's not how it works on the ships you actually probably will forget the days of the week when you are on board and your new days of the week will be uh embarkation day sea day port day tender port um and if you want to know more about what those days include then i have a video on it i'll link it in the description down below let's say you go away for a six month contract uh <laughs> you're gonna be working every day for those six months. Not all day every day, um, but you will be working pretty much every day for six months. So the way it works with time off is you will get like shifts off. So let's say that you work in the restaurant, so you have your morning shift and your evening shift, like breakfast and dinner. So your boss might say, okay, you know, you can have your breakfast, the breakfast shift off, and then just come into work for the dinner shift. So you will still be working at some point that day, but obviously you have time off uh, to rest. So I think like for Steiner, so if you work in the spa, you when you sign your contract, you basically sign to say that you get one and a half days off a week. Um, but that is up to your manager on how she gives it to you or he gives it to you. Um, so they are allowed to either give you one full day off and a half day trust me if you have a manager that does that you are lucky um or your manager can give you three half days which is like the most common thing to do um or they could just like give you maybe three hours or four hours off every day which is a bit shit because four hours isn't really i mean it's not enough to rest like because if you want to because then you if you like let me get my words out so if you have four hours off every day you then have to choose between napping or like going out into port and seeing the destinations and it's very easy like while you're sat at home and you're not tired to be like well i'd go out and see the destinations trust me boo when you get on board a cruise ship everybody naps i don't nap at home like i cannot nap at home if i went to bed now i wouldn't be able to sleep um but on a cruise ship everybody naps on a sea day on your lunch break you don't go and have lunch you sleep um and that's it's just the culture on board a cruise ship i guess so for when i worked in the spa i would normally get um three half days off um and the half days would always be in the morning. I loved having an afternoon off um, because it's, you know, you come in, into work in the morning, but then you finish at like two in the afternoon, but then you have the rest of the day off. So it, it feels like you have longer off. Um, but anyway, but I always had to um, have the morning off and work in the evenings because more people book spa treatments in the afternoon. Like there's very, you know, there's not many people booking for a massage at like eight in the morning. I mean, some people do, don't get me wrong, um, but you're more likely to be busy in the afternoon. So your manager's not, you know, if you can be busy in the afternoon, she's not gonna, she's not gonna give you the busy afternoon off, you know, and let you come in in the morning if it's gonna be dead. So 
whatever time off you get, it will be to suit um, the company's needs. It will be to suit work's needs. It's like, now I work in the shops. So due to like tax reasons, the shops are not allowed to open when the ship is in port. So it would be ridiculous for my manager to say, can you work in the day and have the evening off? Because the shops are gonna be open in the evening. So you get the gist. Basically, you will work um, dependent on what your department needs from you. Another thing you have asked is, can you like, um, okay, so when you're at work, you know, when you can book a day off, you're like, oh, that's my birthdays, so I'm gonna book it off. Or that's my friend's birthday, so I'm gonna book it off work. No, you cannot book days off work. You just kind of get what you're given and that's just how it is. Um, so yes, you will probably have to work on your birthday. Yes, you will work on Christmas. Yes, you will work on Valentine's Day, whatever. Um, you cannot like book time off or, and the same thing is, um, you know, like if you were at home, you could think, right, I'm really tired. I'm gonna book a week off work just so I can like relax. No, once again, that's not how it works. You can't like have a week off work during your six month contract. You are there to work. You will work every single day for those six months. And then at the end of the six months, you will go home for like maybe six weeks or two months and not work. So that's that's kind of the time where you recoup. I don't know how this works in all departments, but revenue departments, so departments that basically make money, so the shops, the spa, the casino, the art department, um, the bars, like anything like that, we have targets to hit. Um, so at the beginning of a cruise, our company will give us a target. Of, let's say like my individual target is five grand. If I hit five grand, then I will earn time off. Um, and I'm sure there's a system like that in every department. It might not be how much money you make because not all departments on board a cruise ship are there to make money. Like for example, the, the kids club, like they don't make any money, but I'm sure they have a way, you know, like if you get so many like good reviews from parents, then you get an hour off or something. So on cruise ships, the second most valuable thing to money is time off. Because obviously you're going to these amazing places, like, you know, you want to see them if you can. Um, so yeah, if by good reviews or how much money you make for the company or I don't know, various other things, you can earn time off. So um, when I was in the spa, I got my one and a half days off, which I had to have because that's in my contract. But then because of maybe how much money I made or good reviews, um, I would earn myself like an extra half day off because the amount of hours that I earned added up to an extra half day off, um, which meant that I got two days off a week. I mean, I knew a guy actually, he worked on the ships and he smashed his target every single cruise. He worked two days a week, two days a week because he'd earned that much time off. Anyway, that's really rare. Please don't go on board expecting to work two days a week because you will be very, very disappointed. Um, but that's just an example. So you can definitely earn time off with um, the things you do. Just going back to like not being able to choose when you have time off. Um, so someone messaged me who's actually working on board or just started working on board a cruise ship and she was like, oh, you know, my parents are coming to cruise and I, I want time, like, I want the week off when my parents are on board. And I was just like, oh, I'm so sorry, but I don't think that's gonna happen. It might do, but it probably isn't. Um, so my parents, my parents have cruised twice. So on uh, two different ships. And on the one ship, I had like such an amazing manager. So I obviously didn't get all, um, all week off but she did give me like two nights off, extra to my time off. You might have a really, really nice manager who's like, yeah, you know what, you haven't seen your family for months, I'm gonna give you some time off. Um, but then my family came to cruise on another ship and I didn't get any extra time off. Um, and that's, you can't like play your face, it's just how it is, you know, 
you signed a contract to say that you would work every day for six months and just because your parents are coming on board does not change that it is completely up to your manager and how lenient they are with time off but also it's not just like how nice they are like it's also can they afford to give you that time off? So like on my first ship, we weren't particularly busy, the crews that my parents came. So yeah, like one one shoppy down, like that's absolutely not a problem. Whereas another ship, like we were rammed. So no, my manager couldn't afford to give me um, time off because which they couldn't afford to be a shoppy down because we were, we were busy, busy. We were busy, 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 busy. Okay, so now we're gonna go through some departments and what time off they get. Um, now, actually, the whole reason that I went from spa to shops, the shops department, is because of the time off aspect. Um, the shops are kind of renowned for having time off. Not on every ship and not on every cruise, but because, as I said earlier, the shops are not able to open in the day, we get pretty much every day off and then work every evening which suits me perfectly because I can get up in the morning I can have all day exploring the ports that we're going to and then in the evening when the ship is at set is has set sail anyway I'm at work so I'm not I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything of course there's like the occasional day where I'll have to come in to work during the day to like stack the shelves or do stock takes or clean or whatever um but that isn't like that isn't all the time so the shops is definitely a, one of the best departments to work in for time off so if you are coming on a cruise ship purely because you want to travel that it's a way for you to see loads of places definitely consider working in the shop the second best department for time off or actually it might be better than the shops to be honest I'm gonna, it's art. So like in the art gallery, I think um, it's white wall, white wall galleries. Um, so my friend works for white wall and they they do the art galleries on board. I think like piano ships. I don't know what other cruise lines they're on. Um, and she was similar to the shops in that. So my friend would only ever work in the evenings. Um, and the same thing actually, she would just come in a little bit in the morning. Um, but actually, I think they have um, better time off because like on a sea day, shop staff work 10 till 11 or nine till 11, it just depends. Um, so it's a long, long day on a sea day. Whereas the art gallery staff, they work like four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening. Um, so yeah, actually, I think the art gallery um, has like the best time off and then it's, and then it's the shops. Shore excursions, um, shore excursion staff is probably one of the best jobs all round because they get their own cabin, um, they earn a, a pretty pretty damn good salary as far as I know, um, they get to go on all the excursions for free, that's optional um, if they want to go on the excursions, all they have to do is on a sea day, they obviously are working all day, um, because people are booking their excursions. And on a port day, they only have to work in the morning to make sure that everyone has kind of got on their excursion all right and, you know, go, fly, enjoy your day. And then they get the rest of the day off. And then let's say there's three people in the excursion team, maybe like one of them will come back in the afternoon just in case there's any like dramas or complaints or whatever. Um, but yeah, so shore excursion staff definitely have one of the best jobs and for time off, definitely. Casino staff. So casino staff work really hard, but they do have all day off because they work all evening. So just like the shops, casino staff will start work when the ship sets sail. However, instead of just working till like 11 at night, which is what the shops do, the casino staff will work till like two or three in the morning. Now, obviously that will depend on the ship because you know, if you've got a younger ship, then yes, you're gonna be working till two or three in the morning because you know, younger people are gonna be in the casino till later. However, if you're on a cruise ship that has like an older um, demographic, then they're probably not gonna be gambling at three in the morning. They might be, but there might be one or two, but it's not gonna be rammed. So you're not gonna be working as late. Um, how, but you do get all day off. So 
you do get that option to get off and explore the ports because you only have to work in the evenings. Photographers, so photographers work every port day morning. Actually, photographers, they, they work really hard actually. So photographers work all day on the sea day, uh, pretty much, and then they work every morning on a port day because, you know, people get off the cruise ship and they're having their photo taken. And then they will kind of have the middle of the day off and then they will work in the evenings. So the photographers don't have the best amount of time off, um, but you know, they still get a good like chunk of the day off. Next cruise, so the place where you book your um, your next your next cruise, um, it's called something different on every cruise ship. I think on PNO it's called Loyalty, on Royal Caribbean it's Next Cruise, on you know, but you get the point. Where you book your next cruise, so they normally work in the morning for maybe a few hours just to do like paperwork and stuff, and then they have the majority of the day off to explore the ports, and then they come into work in the evening. Um, yeah. So they'll, they'll probably start work an hour before the ship sets sail and then they'll work until maybe eight o'clock at night. So, and although like, if you work on land, maybe work until eight o'clock sounds late to you, but trust me, honey, it's not. If you finish at eight o'clock, that's early. I remember like, so in the spa, a lot of the time we, like we would work till 10 and if we finish at eight or, Anyway, if we finished at eight, it was like, oh my God, I have so much time. Um, so the last one I'm gonna say is uh, like the entertainment staff and musicians. So if you are a musician, then yes, you get a lot of time off because maybe you'll do like a few sets during the day or a few sets at nighttime, um, but you won't be working all day or Maybe there'll be the odd day where you're working all day, but it's not gonna be every day. So yeah, musicians definitely get a lot of time off. As for like the dancers um, and the singers on board a cruise ship, they're at the beginning of their contract, they don't get like any time off basically because they're rehearsing. So um, they spend all day rehearsing and then of course they have to put on a show at night or maybe two or three shows at night. Um, so yeah, the beginning of the contract for dancers and singers are in tents. However, after they've like got to grips with the routines and the, they know what they're doing, they obviously have to rehearse less. So definitely kind of middle to end of their contract, they get a lot of time off because you know, they only work in the evenings, you know, they'll do like a rehearsal and then a few shows in the evening, but they get most days off to explore the ports. Like I said, not in the beginning of your contract though, because you're gonna be getting to grips with the routine. Okay guys, so that is the end of this video. Uh, I really hope this has helped you make sense of how time off is given on a cruise ship. And also maybe if you're looking to work on a cruise ship, what job you would want to do that would enable you to have, you know, a good amount of time off so you can actually see the places that you go. Uh, but anyway, thank you again for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if it did help you and I will see you in the next video.